those wide allegations without a shred of evidence has brought a lot of pain to myself, my family across the country, and especially my wife and children. This is just not fair. Rabuche, it is just not fair. I am here being asked to answer to why are allegations unsubstantiated by my brothers in order to cover up their shame. I am ready. You were also accused of being the worst IGP this country has ever had. How did you receive the accusation and what is your reaction? Uzima for Angana TV and Amuhe Mubibia Akwaba and the IGP Dampare Eko Parliament Committee and Nim and Nam Tepu Bia a ba outa na tepu no a ura bugri nabu bugri nabu a former MPP regional chairman a man northern region Nasa leak tepi na or ne police ni bako a friend in Mensa na or ni dinkoma on komodia ne se on beso mutu IGP Dampare a free so. Na allegations be bri and na omokaye efa IGP dampare e hon. Na in semi police form penny fwa omodi kain a ko parliament committee enim a almost also e din ewa sa in semi se umbe tu IGP dampare ne allegations be bri no eye COP George Alex Mensa ena superintendent George Asari omo ene ko parliament committee enimwa allegations be a omo aye ye etia ura IGP dampare no and an IGP Dampare, a coy no one, nurse, or Munya, George, 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 we, a George Alex Mensa, and I will see George Asari, and George for me, you know, or Mune, George Akufu, Dampare, and a whole assam, and a drew committee, no enim. Then come with any beer, a course, so it would tape noom, and the allegations, Nibia, or Moko committee, and any no, or Muditia, IGP Dampare, and they say, or more HSA, MPP, break the eight, the bad thing, Ama mupa because IGP dampare or yes stiff dodo if it's a omu do omu nito as enough said ye na police for ye taita na ye se IGP dampare break the 8 in 2024 when ma emu ye din zinji omu ye tuna e be ye den pa na ba koso so e ye se omu se promotion police for omu penny for ni omu aka omu promotion IGP dampare atina so ay wa atina so a omu pese omu beko omu nim omu be obe promoti omu anasa obe boa ama omu nya promotion ba koso so e ye se Leak tape a bar out no know, omu chese, IGP dambare, and omu susu se, oma obi a recorde, na ono ana omu obi a recorde. Ma akosu soa, ora, COP, George Alex Mensa, eko komitiye ni mokaye, ene se IGP dambare, ne juma ye, oye wes, enye nye 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 Na iwia na ya tuwaso. Yanko, nyanko timbra. Honorable Chair, let me speak briefly about my colleagues here. George is my big brother. JB is my kid brother. Asari is my brother. The beautiful thing is this, Honorable Chair. We've been together for far long. And my brother George, you know, his, his wife, since I joined the police today, I call her my mom. And that will never change. And JB, my brother, my kid brother, when I became the Inspector General of Police, I call you and offer you the position of Director Cybercrime. My brother Asari has already gone through a whole process at various places. And by the time I came, he was still at the position of where he is today. We will not have records to us to where precisely he want to be. And this is how I have coexisted with all of them. And as you can see from behind, all my management teams are here because that is how we do our things. Then all of a sudden this matter came up and the matter was about finding out what has happened and who said what and where it came from. And my brothers were given opportunity to come and speak. And they did speak and made indication that, yes, they are involved 
in what was happening. Then all of a sudden, instead of them to focus on that matter, they came out with wild allegations. Honorable Chair, with wild allegations. That touched my person, the police leadership that I lead, and the entirety of the police service. Without, until today that I'm being told that now they have some evidence, without a shred of evidence, Honorable Chair, at the time that they were making it, without a shred of evidence. And Honorable Chair, those wide allegations without a shred of evidence has brought a lot of pain to myself, my family across the country, and especially my wife and children. That you are so patriotic because you believe in what you call Pan-Ghanianism, where you think that because of your multi-ethnic nature, everybody you see, as long as the person is a Ghanaian, is your brother or a sister, mother or father, uncle or auntie. Then the pain also to my command, my leaders, my team, that we work together, that we all know, and the pain to the thousands of police people who are appreciating the strides that we are making in transforming the organization to be the best institution in the country and a reference point for the rest of the world. They came, made all these allegations in order to cover up probably the shame associated with what they got themselves involved in in the first place. And I, an innocent person, focusing on my job, working in concert with my team and all commands across the country to keep the country safe and make it to be at peace with itself. I've been asked to come and answer to these allegations, which are wide, baseless. And I feel in my spirit that this is just not fair. It is just not fair. Are we killing patriotism? That anybody can just get up, make allegations upon allegations, and people who go across the country at times 48 hours non without sleep, just keeping the country at peace, will be called to come and answer allegations that are unfounded. And that becomes something. Anyway, I'm here. I have no choice. I have no choice and have come. And I say it to the glory of God, my maker who sustains me every day. I will speak to the matters as you direct. And I'm doing this because of the respect I have for myself, for my family, especially my children and wife, for the office that I occupy, for my brothers and sisters who are sitting behind me, that we are pulling ourselves together in an unprecedented manner in a teamwork to get these things done for this country, and for the respect I have for institutions of state, including the parliament that we are here today, and more importantly, the respect I have for Mr. President Nana Adranko Kufuado for the honor that he has done me for making me the inspector general of police to work with my colleagues. And equally more importantly, for the respect I have for the good people of this country. So Honorable Chair, I am here being asked to answer to why allegations unsubstantiated by my brothers in order to cover up their shame. I am ready. I thank you. You, you quoted the Bible, you know. And the, it seems to me you are a student of the Bible, are you? Honorable Chair, I'm a Christian. 
and the Bible is my reference point. There could be a student of the Bible who may probably be, be using the Bible just for examination purposes. But I may not necessarily be a Christian, but I'm Christian. And my reference point in terms of what I guides me is the Bible and the Spirit of God. Thank you. Did you ever find in the Bible that the innocence suffered? The man who claims he's innocent suffered. Have you heard it before in the Bible? Did you read it? Honorable Shay, I am a Christian who understands that. And that is what it is. That is why I'm a bit surprised that um, um, you complain about uh, maybe you doing a good job and you're going through some challenges and suffering because we know that the innocent can suffer. That's the story of Joseph. Never slept with a party first wife. I went to jail. Have you heard this tree adage that only Pakistan has some tunnel? Have you heard it before? I wish I have, but the point I'm trying to make is the fact that we are all human beings. No, na IGP dampare over here na utimze e ni yapa iya ni kasa muni na wadi Bible tu tuhu na o kasa unye sukura ubesu ne ubusa no se break the eight ya amount for a day na mo eni ato no se asa di ono na ubetimi astopo MPP four asa ono na uniwa no ma MPP four ubetimi a break eight ni ni na ne DNT na kofu a day omo ana se police form peni fu in samu omo kani a DNT a day tu mi pa ben owa ubetimi astopo MPP for a more more air cassa. Now, sir, boa, a sem barqua, ni police benifon barco, a kind of say, or a west, or no dear, ni dumaya wood in a yokrano, ninano, or cassafa, who yanko, yanko tiagip dampare. By your reckoning, what is it about you that people pass a vote of confidence like this? That if you are there, MPP cannot break the eight. And if we are not there, then it becomes um, an opportunity to break the eight. What is informing um, this vote of confidence in you? And what is significant is that there's a lot of intelligence you have that I don't know. On our chair, I still make a point. That is somebody's opinion. And what is that about me? He's doing a professional police job. And then that's not, nothing more than that. Very grateful to you. Now, I yield space to the other members to ask questions. And um, we note what the IGP will say. So, the vice was, I thought you had a residual power when they finished. Do these are preliminary matters. Okay. Yes. Yes. Let me. These are privileges. Yes. Come on. Okay. Please. So. These so. are privileges reserved for leadership. Then, then continue. Yes. So, Honorable Patrick Puma, do you want to deny the fact that leadership is entitled to certain privileges that you are not entitled to enjoy? <laughs> So let, 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 let me take the floor. Inspector General of Police, you, you've heard this contradiction. Leadership have privileges, you know. You heard that? And, and, and he's saying that uh, um, he wants to call for a division. He said that. You see how people can contradict themselves, you know. Okay, so Vice, Vice is going to probably um, 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 sort of... Uh, do a follow-up to some of the issues I raised, but he will have his turn. So, Vice, do you have a lot of questions on the follow-ups before you have your turn? Oh, there are not too many questions. Okay, then. Yes. 
Uh, but just to place on record that the, uh, this statement mm. that the Honorable Bois read, mm. which culminated in the institution of these proceedings, simply um, recalled you know, what he had heard from the, the leaked audio. Mm. And so they are not words, the words contained in this statement are not words that Honorable Boy generated. Or they are not a figment of his imagination. They flow directly from the leaked audio. So they talk about breaking the eight, etc., etc., are not his words. Well, just to place that on record. But the General of Police. You see, if you go through the record of proceedings that this committee furnished you with, you find that there is um, some accusation which has been labeled against you, which is to the effect that you orchestrated the recording of the leaked audio as IGP. I want you to speak directly to this particular accusation. Did you play any role in respect of the recording of the leaked audio. Honorable Chair, like the chairman asked initially, I did not play any role in it. Now, IGP you also read through the proceedings and you would find that in it you may want to respond to this in the open i don't know how you it sits with you but you were also accused of being the worst igp this country has ever had how did you receive the accusation and what is your reaction Honorable Chair, thank you very much. Honorable Chair, I think probably my brother wanted to say I'm the best and he missed it. <laughs> <laughs> because the records are there for everybody to see. The beauty of mankind is that everybody has an opinion and he can express it in any form or shape. But that has not changed the facts. And this is the point, Honorable Chair. Since my colleagues and I, and the rest of the commands across the country, had opportunity by the grace of God and with the honor done me by His Excellency the President, Nana Adudanko Ekufuado, we committed ourselves to transforming the organization to become the best institution in the country and a reference point for Africa and beyond in a teamwork fashion, based on Genesis 1, 26. So even granted that I'm the West, then all of us collectively are the West, including probably my brother who was serving in that capacity as member of the team that I led, I lead, I lead. So I think it was a slip of tongue on his part. But let me speak to the issue. This is what it is. We, the current administration, want to be the best in terms of all those who have come before us. And we have a good reason for that. Honorable Chair. And we are there getting on to becoming the best in the history of the country. And I'll explain. 
the reason why we want to be the best and we are getting to be the best as a police administration under my leadership is that when most of our forebearers were there, we were. We saw what they did right and the challenges they faced. So being a graduate of management and leadership and a continuous student of sociology, psychology, and philosophy, it is just clear that when you saw your forebearers doing what they were doing and you saw what they were doing right and you saw the challenges they were facing, and you have this background, and you have the opportunity, you surely should perform better than them. And it is simple. You do what they were doing right, you learn from their mistake and make them better. So if you add them to what they were doing right, there's no way you cannot be better than them. And this is what we are doing. And at the point, maybe I will share with you so many interventions we have put across the country and working in concert with all the other security agencies that has brought us to this level of peace, security, law and order across the country in an unprecedented way. But the next point, Honorable Chair, is the fact that we don't want to be the best in the whole life of the police service, but rather we want those who come after us to be better than us because by the same yardstick, they are watching us in terms of what we are doing, those that we are getting right, and the challenges that we are facing, so that they be able, they will be able to outperform us. And when they do that, then they will also become better than us and all our forebearers. And when that happens, we will end up building strong institutions and not having strong men. And this is what we are doing. So it is not true that my administration is the worst. It can never be. He missed it. He missed it. And with your permission, I will speak to a few of the interventions that we put across. First, your, your Honorable Chair, we came in at a time that so many places across the country were engulfed by criminal elements, especially armed robbers all over the place. And now, across all the major highways, you can feel it. In the past, in the past, when you are traveling from Kintampo, Bupe, Tamale, you normally have to say your last prayers. What is the situation now? In the past, when you are traveling from Tafo, Osimu, Begro, to Kwau, it was virtually a no-go area. In the past, when you are traveling from Kintampo, Zamramad to Prime, it was a horrific journey. In the past, when you are traveling from Efijasi through Kumau to Robonso to Mamikrobo, you must forget it. In the past, when you are traveling from Bamboy, Bole, Tuna, Tuwa, it's another ball game. In the past, when you are traveling from Takwa to Bogoso, Wasakropon, it was a sad scene. In the past, when you are traveling from Dungawanofin, even to Asimfosu, a terrible situation. And from Praso to New Adubiase, to my MB brothers from town Bekwai, to Kumasi, it was another thing. I can go on and on and on. And as for Donkokrum, it was a daily thing. We've worked together as a team at all levels of command, 
and across all the security agencies to normalize the situation. Equally, the crimes that were happening, residential robberies in all our cities, you've stemmed the tide in a committed way. This is just one. On which, with the support of the police council, with discussions, and with the approval of His Excellency the President, we have created seven more new police regions to bring close policing closer to the people of this country. Because our assessment when we came to office, we saw that policing across the country was very minimal, roughly about 47 or there about percent. But with instructions from Mr. President, we've been able to deal in policing in a manner that has never happened before. And that dovetailed into the concept of visibility, where we've demonstrated the presence of policing at all corners of the country through the establishment of 144 regional FPU bases across the country. Currently, the establishment, we've been able to roll out 121 of them. And this come with an average of 35 officers, number of motorbikes, a vehicle, to ensure that they are engaging the communities, they are patrolling the highways, and then they are patrolling the communities so that they will have their peace of mind to live their life. On which I can go on and on and on. When we came, we have established Police Emergency Medical Intervention Fund with the approval of Mr. President, where 1.6.1 million cities is in there to ensure that every police officer who gets injured in the course of duty can be sent to everywhere in the world to give treatment to the person in order to come on board. Honorable Chair, in the process, as you have seen, with our quest to engage the communities and win their hearts and minds, gone across the country with my team, analyze and identify, and identify and analyze all their concerns, working on putting measures in place through special groups in order to ensure that they work and keep them safe. Honorable Chair, we have also worked on the issue of decentralizing so many things that were centralized at the headquarters. The welfare department, counseling department, intelligence unit, processing of certain things including criminal checks. So we are on the quest of ensuring that at the end of the day, we leave the organization better than we come to find it. So all these interventions, almost about 45 or there are about of them, and putting it together, working with the other security agencies, that is what has brought us far in terms of the type of internal security that we enjoy. So would anybody come in to say that you are the West IGP? It's unfounded, it's unfortunate, and I think the best the person could have done, if he has nothing to say, is probably keep quiet and allow the good people of this country to make a determination on us. And Honorable Chair, the final point on this matter is that it is not about dampering. It's about the police administration. It is not about dampering. It's about the police administration. The police is not a sole proprietorship. It is an institution with governance and management structures. Dampari is just one of the officers involved in the governance and the management structure. So that is what it is. And we work in concept and make sure that all decisions that we need to take, we take it as a group. And when it needs to the attention of the police council, we get that as well. But the interesting point is this. As my colleagues will bear us out, or will bear me out, all these decisions, where it matters, we've been sending to the, division, the regions, the districts, the divisions, and the stations for them to hold meetings and get their inputs involved. And that's the level of teamwork 
that we brought to bear on the work that we do. So it isn't about dampering. It is about an institution that we have decided to work together because nobody put a rope on our neck to join the service. And at the end of the day, the service doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to any individual. But once we are there to earn our daily bread in service of the people, we have to find a way of working together. And that is what I have done since I came. And my colleagues are the best witnesses for that. I thank you. I was saying, IGP Dampare ni akwa kuti na ban. Nefa promotion se ebe promoti police form penimfoni bi ene omwa akano ni nina wabu awa che se promotion ni de egusua omwa ewe koswa dizemba ebe ukurano mbe promoti nko fo na yes omu de di Christmas and as omu be promoti police form na omu de di Christmas. Na yes promotion ni ufiti ya ni ya promoti ube ti mi eche unfi ni na ewe na yes so omu she wa mwadi mo ene sedye wa honke ka esi tiye eno ono kure esi tiye eno omo de e promoti eno ti ninyina wakasa hwa yenko nyengu tiye emra some officers are due promotions especially those at your level I know some have to go to the police council for recommendations and approval what is the situation with regards to promotions are there any um, hold-ups with regards to promotion of certain junior officers within the service. Honorable Chair, there is no hold-up of promotion of any junior officer in the whole police service. Even as we speak, the structure has been that any junior officer who is four years are sent to training and they are promoted and we are waiting to have all of them promoted. Those who are due, the next set of junior officers who are due for promotion, who are now, we have worked on in trying to rebuild their capacity, send them to Achiramatin in the Eastern region to reshape and recalibrate them. Are currently there and we are rolling out these and making sure that they are promoted in December and we've arranged it in such a way that it becomes like something like a Christmas call. So nobody in the service, nobody in the service, and the junior rank that you are saying, whose promotion is being held. So that is another set of concorded story that is being put out there for mischievous reasons. What about um, those senior officers whose promotions have to be sent from management to council? Honorable Chair, every one of them, with the exception of a few, have been sent. And the few who have been sent, and the few who are there, is based on the fact that beyond the number of years that you have been in the position, there is other factors other factors. And I'm told a few is about seven or eight or nine other factors that come into it. And those other factors include competence, include vacancy, include integrity, including all other factors. And when this beyond that it becomes the preserve of the police council and from that level who we'll make recommendations to His Excellency Mr. President and for that to be effected. So assistance, everybody who's supposed to be promoted based on the junior rank has been done. Everybody who's supposed to be promoted based on the senior rank has been done. And that is where we are. Thank you, Honorable Chair. So the grumbling officers, senior officers, says um, promotion, that has not taken effect. It's not from POMAC, but from the police council. Your Excellency, Honorable Chair, that is the position because they are the people to promote. And more importantly, recently a meeting was held and some consideration has been done. But the most important thing is that everybody who's supposed to be promoted in line with our policies are being promoted. But the point that has to be made is that 
It's not a question about how many years you have been at the place. We would have all loved to be promoted as soon as we are four years and there about. Vacancy, competencies, and other things factor into it. I myself, at a point, I was in my, on my rank for six years. And I didn't complain because I understand. IG, is that a practice that you can be at your rank for six years? Because we have your, your promotions here. And that I can tell the committee that between 97 and 2003, that's about six years, you're also a subtenant. But it's also on record that from ASB in 1996 to DSB, I don't, I, DSB, I, have, I don't have the date here. But to superintendent was just a just about two years or less than that. And I would say, in my introduction, remark, I did alluded to that, and I did say that that promotion was based on my academic qualifications in line with existing policies at that time. Yes, I understand. We we have a fair idea that once you chartered as an accountant, you were jumped from one position to subtenant of police. Is that policy still in place? Are those who have for those who have um, upgraded themselves academically? Honorable Chair, that policy. As far as I'm concerned, with the passage of Constitutional Instrument CI 76 2012, that policy, from my reading of the, that CI 76 2012, is no more in, in operation. will determine the seriousness of that, uh, Mr. Andan. Um, we were also told that some junior officers have been jumped or triple jumped by your good self without having gone through the merits. And it became an issue for us to interrogate. Um, uh, can you speak to that, please? Honorable Chair, the important thing is that these promotions which is in line with our regulations in terms of special recommendation. Nobody has been jammed three times. But the most important thing is this. These are matters that are discussed by police council and approved. So if a decision on that matter has been worked on by the police council, I think it will be difficult for me to speak to it. Do you have a unit called uh, the inspection unit? Yes, Honorable Chair, we do. What, what is their duty? What are their duties or functions? Honorable Chair, broadly I can say that the document establishing them, I don't have it readily here, but as the name sound, they are out there to ensure that they do inspection of police facilities, police records, and they make recommendations. And there are 16 officers in one office, we are told. We're informed that in that small office, you have about 16 officers instead of four occupying that office. On that the, case. the point is this. The word instead of four. I don't know where it is coming from. We have a unit, and a unit of four people, then I don't know what it is. There's no limit as to the number of people who will be there to do inspections across the country. And the other point of they being in one office, I have to check, because the unit 
as a commander who is a deputy commissioner of police. And you agree with me that it will be a difficulty for Inspector General of Police to be going around looking for offices for people who are supposed to know where to look for an office for their work. And if the challenge is not beyond them, or if the challenge then go beyond them, then drawing to the attention of the relevant commissioner and the shadow and handle. So now that you've brought to my attention, I'll go and look at it. If the commander there has not been able to look at it, I'll go and look at it and in my usual self, work with my colleagues and see what that issue is. There, there, there seem to be a lot of units under your administration, um, inspection units, uh, visibility, and recently we heard of the special damper unit. Do you have any special damper unit for purposes of special operations who are untouchable, who don't report to anybody and to the Inspector General of Police? And we are told some of them have beard, some wear earrings, and uh, not properly attired, and a lot more. Is there, is there any unit within the service like that? Honorable Chair, first of all, there is no unit called Special Dampery Unit. It's a figment of people's imagination. And I think the point must be made. The second point is that there is a police intelligence directorate which complements police operations. And what has happened in the past is that we were having challenges when it comes to these operations. And we needed to top up with our intelligence and the intelligence were at only the national level. So my colleagues and I, once again, worked together and we decided to decentralize that unit such that each of the 25 policing commands will have their own intelligence unit that shape intelligence gathering to inform the operations of the region. So all those units under the various regional commanders and then they also work in tandem with the national director general in charge of intelligence. They don't report to me. Thank you. Um, not to personalize matters. You want to come in? Okay. Oh, Aji. Oh, the, the, the concluding part of your response that's um, where I want to, you know, proceed from. He said, they don't report to you. Now, part of the allegations against you is that that unit in question reports only to you. They don't take instructions from your commanders. I think... That was part of the testimony before the committee uh, when previous witnesses appeared. So, sir, what's your reaction to that? And I would say, like I said, it has, it, there are unit that has been institutionalized with the commanders and a chain of command up to the national level with a director general in charge. But when you go to the regions, it's like CID, which will work with the regional commander as, his sub as one of his subordinates and when it comes to criminal investigations. And yet, they also work in tandem with the Director General CID. This is the same framework that has been used for the establishment and decentralization of the intelligent component of the police service. In the past, it's like intelligence were things that we needed to keep improving as an institution and also work across other security agencies and the intelligence component and to make sure that this country continues to be at peace with itself. So the units are institutionalized. The units are with the regional commanders 
and at the national level they have a director general who is in charge of them and who from time to time give us a briefing on our daily meetings on our weekly meetings and when as and when we also have emergency meetings on matters of concern and we get it done there is nothing like anybody or a group of people out of the normal chain of command reporting to Dambara or anything it is a lie Aji, um, what is the administration, your administration's um, relationship with the military high command? We were given an impression that all was that all wasn't um, well with the police administration and the military high command. Well, I would say this is another lie, just to paint you black, or typically calling a, ba a dog a bag neck and hunky. We have an excellent relationship with all the heads of the security agencies. And it's so excellent that at the end of the day, the cordiality goes beyond the official work. The beauty of it is this. Constitutionally, each and every of the agencies has their role to play. And we know where we also need to work together in what I term institutional teamwork and get things done for this country. So we urge these people to stop trying to put our heads against each other. It's shameful. It's not good for this country. And you cannot do this. You should stop it. They can use any other thing to get anything that they want. But they shouldn't use that. They should be patriotic. Because that's the only place we have called home, Ghana. So in their quest to achieve their selfish interest, they shouldn't create confusion. So when I would say that is what it is, and I know that's how it sits. We'll continue to work together as various security agencies, helping each other in the interest of the country, for Ghana, our beloved country, to continue to be at peace with itself. I thank you. I was in a way, I am common mukakra, I did be damp, I omoka sa chepa, na, we, I can cry with me, at the abre of our comment, brow comment session, like, and subscribe to the channel. Yeah, first of all, Simicle Beauty Product, Simicle Product, a Ghana, for, and yeah, 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 maybe I'm a to, in Kusron Kwan, or the Yanka Sauba, the Nepal, the Amaya, my own, and yeah, yeah, and it's so only Pococo, and I won't put into me, you will be an idea. Two fran wa chichim se mi petun tum ya man petun tum de o koko so an wa chirim and no dan chen so an kwa dan ketwa no di mu chire se so mu nyine film kole mu ba mpani mu a e o mo bi de ntu bia na e basa nyina mu so tumi nya semi clear beauty product e ba mu akwa dan na wa wona gan ha no wo ben no me no fefe fe se de ya wona bru chirim se nku nya e ken se upe bia to ampa cho bo modia se no mase nebu screen so no wo be fa na wa fre na ya chiro be bi bi wo ana be bi en fa mre wo so ye gan ani kwa na wo ma no ne en fa ho but when so bad, GBS and some penny say, do for cheer, and then some of your people crana, and then chemnes, or again, or brucha, or near bruni, but when so bad, so chromun kum, and no, a semi clear beauty products on the soya sne. TikTok, Facebook, nafi, Instagram, baby, I owe between a dink down with the chee, nor shenyama, ediba, itraso, abrenia, brenina.